Okay, but you didn't save a lot because I help people organize too and they have like rooms filled with stuff. How do you get rid of all this? I'm like, you take a picture <laughs> and you give them all the pictures and you keep the one or two things that right. were special and you don't. Otherwise, especially you as an actress or if your husband's in the business, you could collect so I much do stuff have, from all. Yeah. Do I, you do that? I do still need somebody like you because I just throw it in a box and never look at it. So I do have sort of boxes of junk that. Yeah. You I, like, I, I have no all interest in even yes. looking at it, yes. to, even to cull it. Yeah. Yes. I think it's nice for you, especially to have some mementos from your career for your kids to have you know right. piece of you, you don't know, need this all of it you don't yeah. need all of it you right. take pictures of it have a photo album of everything and pick two or three things and what i like to do is have one bank box for each year for each person so this is you know especially when the kids are in you know grade school or high school you get one bank box for each year and is then that like a shoe box um like this you know where you put your bank files in. Oh, yeah, you get them cool. at Staples or anything. Yeah, a box That's like plenty. this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's just something to say, okay, here's the best stuff of this year. Then they could go through it later when they want. Right. But like for her, it's like, okay, this is what you did in kindergarten. Here were your best little art projects. It would all go in a bank yes. box. <laughs> 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 exactly, exactly. But for you, yeah. So how do you spend your time when you're not acting what are hobbies do you have i would think somebody like you is somebody who's very conscious socially because of your yeah heart. i have no hobbies no None? hobby i can't i have no hobbies so apart from my kids obviously suck up mm -hmm. a lot of time because i'm you know taxi <laughs> yes, taxi yes. to their lives i have no hobbies so when i'm in new zealand and um there's no work to chase i have to get busy i have to busy my mind otherwise i get doughy like physically mentally um and it eventually depressed so i now write for the newspaper um what do you write about anything i want to so the things that are coming out i've, I've kept it down to writing just once a month because i don't want to commit my life to that it's a big life choice you know and, and i think all it's changed my interior life writing for the paper because everything's potentially an article you know a column rather and uh so i went out with the new south auckland police and uh did a visit to recidivist pedophiles in the community well, that's interesting i was very careful not to um not to identify anybody not to give any uh, physical descriptions or give them names, anything like their own names. In fact, I just kept calling them by initials, which are not even their own. Um, but boy, could I have given really, um, I, I could have given mean, incredibly powerful descriptions of these particular gentlemen. Anyway, um, it was super interesting, but I was still writing in only 800, 900 words. You can't give all sides to an article. You, ca you can't research, you can't, you, you, there's no way of putting a pretty face on recidivist pedophilia. And I started a conflagration and I felt like I'd started a witch hunt. And the fact is these people have paid their dues and the police have started a new, um, squad to try to act almost like AA sponsors so they say and they would go around and visit them and say okay what are, what are your triggers what's going on in your life what is the family situation all this stuff so that if they fear that they're going to reoffend, they can ring up the officer from the squad and go and say help help I'm going to offend a four-year-old just moved in here and that's my age group because there's often there's a specific age group that people mm -hmm. go for and they, the police come and hook them out of that halfway house immediately. And that child is safe, at least from this chap, you know. It's a very complicated world. It's a very complicated thing to talk about without riling society because they're so taboo anyway. I felt ashamed that I had kind of handed these guys the pitchforks to go after people who admittedly are terribly dangerous but some of them are trying not to reoffend, if only to keep themselves out of prison. Absolutely. And um, to have vigilantism um, 
going after them or or targeting halfway houses and there are many different types of people in halfway houses yes. they can just have they might have mental illness they might be just down on their luck temporarily um, I felt ashamed and that's like that's difficult because you realize how powerful you are like people will read my articles and um, some of it's for the Lucy Lawless factor and, and now it's because I've written these things which have yes, ignited a lot yes. of interest.